What's up guys? Happy Thursday. Hope everyone's doing well. So I wanted to shoot another high level walkthrough, but this time covering sponsored brands. Uh, this is perfect timing because Amazon Advertising just sent out this email here, basically promoting sponsored brands and, you know, mentioning the data point that sponsored brands typically see an increase in ROAS around 12%. So for one, I am super pumped Amazon is improving their kind of advertising communication. Their education platform has gotten so much better and they're just being much more hands-on, which is going to be amazing for all of us. Um, but I did want to kind of mention a little cautionary point here that typically sponsor brands uh, run really closely to what sponsor products does in terms of ROAS and ACOS. Uh, if not a little bit worse if you don't know how to properly manage them because this is another extremely complex ad type. We now have the ability to write copy, to adjust our images, custom image beta, all kinds of different landing pages, and that is everything I'm going to be covering in this video. Again, hopefully I can keep it short enough for LinkedIn. If not, I'm really sorry if I have to drive you guys to YouTube. Um, so let's hop on in. All right, so sponsored brands. These are the typical ad formats you see. Some accounts don't have store spotlight, some of them don't have video beta, but these are all of the options. So when you click, let's say product collection, one of the first things you're gonna have to do is choose your landing page. So you can either drive to your store page, including the sub pages, or a new product list page. Now, the pages that you drive to are actually gonna be pretty dependent on the type of keywords you're targeting, and I'm gonna kinda walk through why here. I love driving to a list page. Um, if you're a CPG company, you're probably gonna wanna push that beautiful store page, which I'm gonna walk through in a little bit. But uh, new product list pages are really, really easy for the consumer because if they click on your headline ad, they're probably interested in one of the three products and it's gonna take them to a landing page with these specific products. So healthy food, top of the funnel, I see these three incredible products. I'm probably gonna be interested in one of these flavors unless I'm super, super familiar with the brand which considering I did not type in Noka, I typed in healthy food, which is top of the funnel, I'm probably not too familiar with this brand. So let's say I click on this. It's gonna take me to a really clean, really concise landing page where I can see all of their reviews, their subscribe and save and all their products. This is fantastic. If, for instance, it was driving me to uh, um, a store page, like let's say Venus Shaving Cream, something like that. Let's say I love the extra smooth swirl razor, razor handle and that's the one I want. So I click on the ad because that seems really interesting. I don't love driving to the front page of a store page because it really complicates a consumer funnel. For example, the product I was interested in isn't even here. I would have to click around to all of these different sub pages just to find it versus a landing page which shows you exactly the products I want, no complications. Now, there's definitely instances where we can drive to a store page and I'm gonna walk through some of that. But going back to the landing page, all you do, you know, you click your products, try to keep them extremely similar to what kind of search terms you're gonna be targeting. And you're gonna have the ability to, you know, write copy and do a creative. Uh, for your copy, we don't like to do anything generic unless, again, it's super top of the funnel or it's our brand name. We try to align the copy with the words we're targeting. So, for example, let's say I'm targeting sleep aid tablets. Um, in my copy, if all the keywords I'm targeting include sleep aid, I probably want to write about sleep aid in my headline. Now, let's say I'm targeting only melatonin-based keywords it's gonna look fantastic if in my headline I put melatonin because we don't have the ability to write dynamic copy. So this kind of allows us to align our headline with the actual search terms consumers are searching. Now, yes, this is super incremental. I don't recommend launching, you know, a hundred different headline campaigns all with like melatonin sleep aid, writing melatonin copy, nighttime sleep aid, kids sleep aid. Um, that's gonna get really, really in depth and incremental and over complex. So focus on the one or two you know, major keywords and just separate them out that way. That again, increases click through rate because when a consumer types in melatonin sleep aid, the first thing they're gonna read in your headline, melatonin sleep aid. Um, number two, custom image beta. This is fantastic and none of people are doing it. It is a little bit more of a complicated creative because you have to have the exact size guidelines, but it is 
gorgeous and it's one of the biggest headlines. We've seen incredible results, results with it, increased click-through rate, able to tell our brand story, things like that. As an example of what that looks like, this is a custom image beta headline. It takes up the majority of the page. It allows us to showcase all of our other products. We still have the ability to write copy and it's gorgeous. I highly, highly recommend people start jumping on this headline ad um, because it's amazing. I love it. Um, optimize your ad. So this is something I don't have any data on. I don't play around with it too much. Um, if I have multiple products that aren't really similar, then I'll run them. Um, but it, it's kind of incremental. Targeting, keyword targeting versus product targeting, run both. Um, both do fantastic, both kind of different placements. Keyword targeting, of course, is gonna be uploading all of your keywords. Use your search term report data for your sponsored products. You already have all of this data on the sponsored product side. It's gonna convert the exact same on the sponsored brand side, typically. Now, something to call out, uh, sponsored brands can be a little bit more competitive because of the amount of placements. So for sponsored products, if you're bidding on healthy food exact, you have potential to show up in four different placements right here. All of these placements down here and all over the product detail page. If you're bidding on healthy food for sponsored brands headline, it's gonna be a much smaller space that you can occupy like the top of search headline right here or some of the new sponsored brand placements that are on the bottom of your page, which drive to a store page. So that's kind of something to note is for really competitive categories where everyone's trying to win that top headline search ad placement, your CPCs may be a bit higher because again, it is an auction model. So if you have 30 people bidding on that one placement, your bid's probably going to go up. Um, one thing to note. So I think that pretty much covers the majority of my call outs for a new product list page. Um, so let's hop into a product collection Amazon storefront. So again, CPG brands love driving to their storefront. It's a great way to, you know, increase your brand awareness, things like that. And I do like stores. I really do. If they're set up appropriately, they're clean, concise, and they don't overcomplicate the consumer funnel. A good example here would be something like Starbucks. So if someone types in Starbucks and that's it, you know, bid on it, broad phrase and exact, it makes sense to drive them to your home page on Starbucks because they're probably looking for your brand, but they're not sure what type of product they're going to look for. So you could drive them to strictly Starbucks and then the Starbucks homepage. Now where it gets complicated is when you have fantastic sub pages. For example, if someone types in Starbucks coffee K cups, I would probably only show my K-Cups because we know that's what they're looking for and only drive them to the Starbucks K-Cups page, so K-Cup pods. Because again, we don't want to overcomplicate what they're looking for and we want to drive them to exactly what they're searching. Because again, Amazon's not like Google where people are just searching around, you know, looking for a YouTube video on Starbucks. They are looking to purchase. So we need to align their purchase path with what they're searching. So I would probably drive to the sub page that most aligns with the keywords I'm targeting. Again, it gets crazy incremental. Um, don't do this for every single keyword possible, but take your main sub pages and create your keyword targeting to be aligned with that. Again, align your copy with it, include a custom image beta. These do fantastic. So that way if someone types in Starbucks coffee K cups and they click on your headline search ad, they're already driven to K-Cups rather than the homepage. Even though this is a fantastic opportunity to show them all of the new products you have, it's great, love it, great store page. Um, I still just like a clean and concise funnel. I do love this new feature though on store pages. So that's kind of my biggest call out with Amazon stores. This is probably one of the highest promoted headline search ads for CPG brands. Um, private label brands typically stick with a new product list page just because, you know, they don't have the brand awareness to drive someone to a store page and then have the consumer alignment of, oh yeah, I know this brand. I love this brand. I'm brand loyal. I need to see their store page, things like that. So, uh, Let's check out the kind of last big targeting type, store spotlight beta. I do not see this being ran too often, um, probably because I believe it's just for mobile. And I do a lot of my searches on desktop. 
But what's really cool about this is if you do want to push those stores, you can drive to the specific subpages and have all the subpages show on your headline. Um, this is really, really great for those CPG brands that do have fantastic sub pages. So I actually built an example here. Let's say someone types in Under Armour. That's extremely, extremely top of the funnel. Under Armour men's. So they could be looking for anything men's wear here. Maybe they just have a husband that loves Under Armour products, but they're not sure what they want to buy them. So they type in Under Armour men's. We can actually display all of the sub pages here and it'll drive them strictly to tops, bottoms, accessories. We could do shoes, you know, we could do cold gear, anything like that. You can change the display name. You can change the page again based off your sub pages and it's going to drive someone specifically to that page. Again, this is great for top of the funnel traffic like Under Armour men's. Now, if someone typed in Under Armour men's shirts, I'm probably not going to want to do this method for my keyword targeting. I'm probably going to want to drive them again to the last sub page of under Armour store men's right here and have everything showcasing just drive to that page. But top of the funnel traffic, this does really fantastic because you can showcase all of your sub pages here and they can click on the one that most aligns with what they're looking for. Um, so really like these again, only on mobile, great for big brands that actually have fantastic stores and sub pages. So that's what I love. Um, what it looks like again is it drives specifically through to like the top layer for the men's sub page. So it's basically a landing page like we talked about here. It drives to a landing page where they're not being, you know, thrown 98 different products that they're not aligned with. They're being aligned and seeing only the tops that they're originally searching for. So really like those. Again, um, copy, make sure it aligns. Right here, I'd probably be Under Armour men's gear. Make sure all of my keyword targeting had men's in it. Probably want to put women's um, because if someone's typing in women's, they see a headline strictly for men's, probably not going to click over. Again, run product targeting. Um, yeah. So in terms of aesthetics and building out your sponsor brand store pages, these are my top tips kind of dive into some smaller details is you can run video. Video are fantastic. One quick call out. I don't have any examples pulled up right now. Couldn't find any today. But for video beta, it does not drive to a store page. So make sure your videos are product specific for right now. They do drive to, you know, the listing, just a single listing. So um, if you're Under Armour, don't do a video that's just a commercial with all your products. Do a specific shoe driving to that specific shoe. Again, these tactics get really incremental and it's kind of all about 80-20. Start with your top products and build these out separately. Uh, drive to the correct store pages, things like that, but they do fantastic. We could dive into probably a whole segment on keyword targeting and product targeting with these, but the majority of the keyword strategies are really, really similar to what you do on sponsor products. Same for the bidding. Um, just one other thing to note is we do now have this for sponsored brands. Drives to a store page, copy, image, logo. I love them. I think they look great. They're also showing up on the product detail page now. So again, this is another ad type. I think Amazon's really going to look to scale. We're going to get more creative control. Hopefully we're going to get more dynamic control potentially on and off platform, but I love sponsor brands. It's kind of, it was initially our bread and butter. So let me know if you guys have any other questions and hope this helps and have a wonderful weekend guys.